everybody's been asking what you have in your computer or in your system. What is your rig? Everybody wants to know. Everybody knows what mine is. They all want to know what yours is. Well, my case to begin with is the Zygmatech Talon, which seems to barely exist on the planet Earth. I talked to Zygmatech about this. They said they were having real trouble uh, getting this into the United States. They've got a lot of their products in the USA, but for some reason they're having trouble with this one. I'm not sure why, but Zygmatech, figure something out, and Amazon, Newegg, all you guys call Zygmatech because we need this case in the USA. All right, so uh, what do you like about the case? I really like the aesthetic. I mean, you, you shouldn't really go just for aesthetics, but I, I couldn't really help myself in terms of this case. I really, really like it. And it, it is rubberized, which feels nice, but it's kind of a pain in terms of dust. So if you're somewhere that has like a carpet or something, I probably wouldn't really recommend it. Now, I want to be clear on something here because aesthetically, there's like the stuff that looks like, oh my God, this is my first computer. And you make it look like a lowrider or something like with lights everywhere and all that crap. And I, you know, my first computer, I actually put a freaking like, glowing lights on the inside of it. I was like, yes! Um, and then now I've kind of grown out of that. And I've got the Fractal Define R4. It's just a black box with clean lines. <laughs> it's a black rectangle. But this one's still, it's kind of somewhere in between all that. It's not like, it's not goofy in my opinion. It's almost like, what did you call it earlier? It's a punk in a tie. So yeah, it's a punk in a tie. Yes. They should be using that. Zygma Tech, you should use that on your side. This, is, this, this case is a punk in a tie. You get the best of both worlds. It's not extremely flashy, but it's not too plain either. It's got some teeth, man. Yeah, it's definitely got some teeth. The dust filters actually work really well. Yeah, there's like zero dust inside your case, but the dust filters had like nine, had like two cats. Yeah. <laughs> they were like still alive too. Yeah. We don't even have cats, and I was like, where'd these cats come from? They're in the <laughs> dust filter, all right. All right, CPU. The AMD FX 9590, which I just put in the other day. That thing is hot and uh, uses a lot of power. All right, so why do you have that one? I mean, you used to have, you had the 8350, mm -hmm. and we just took that one out and put this one in. We're gonna do some tests to see if it's faster than the 8350. I'm sure it's gonna be a little bit faster than the 8350, but it uses a, a stupid amount of power. I mean, it's just like, why do you have this one? It renders faster, and my computer, my whole goal behind my computer is to be a mean stream machine. It is built for streaming. So with the 9590, you really don't even need a um, like a streaming or a capture card. I mean, you can. It would be nice to have one, but you really can get by without it. I experience almost no performance hit while I'm streaming. Uh, I've got the Intel 4930K. Hers is actually better at streaming than mine is, but mine's a little better overall. Yeah. Well, you do a lot of productivity, and I do a lot of gaming and streaming. So with the 8350 in there, it was probably about the best uh, per dollar performance that you could get. The 93, I mean, the 9590 kind of excuse that a little bit, but not much. I mean, it's still, we because we, you paid like 300 bucks for it. So it's still a pretty good deal. And uh, 9590 for 300 bucks is, is not bad as long as you don't mind the extra power draw, which is going to be a few extra dollars a month, but not as much as people think it's going to be. People freak out and they're like, dude, oh my God, your power bill is going to go up to $700. No, it's not, you idiots. It's um, minuscule. All right, cooling units. Now, these have been loud, and I've been complaining a lot, so what have we got? Well, at first, I tried the H100i, and I thought it was going to be great. It didn't really like my case. It, it, I really had to cram it in there, which I think kind of resulted in overly loud fans. They so. were Well, they were, like, completely mashed against some of the cords, and uh, the 8-pin power connector on the top, the, the fan was just absolutely mashing that down. It was so crushing it. It was creating a lot of pressure. We had to loosen the screws a little bit. It was not a good situation. H100i is not as noisy as, uh, as this normally, but in this case, it is very noisy. So, the solution. The solution was the Noctua NHD14, which is gargantuan, but it is so quiet, and it's only a few degrees Celsius warmer than the H100i was. Actually, our tests are almost identical. It's uh, over a long period of time. It's like a one or two degrees hotter over, after like fifteen minutes or something. Yeah, between the temperature difference and the sound difference, the Noctua is so much more worth it. And we, we went from like vacuum to whisper. Yeah, I, I picked out the motherboard. Uh, we, we picked up an Asus M5A99FX Pro uh, Revision 2.0, and this is uh, we were looking at this one and the also looking at the Sabertooth, the both uh, you know really good 990FX motherboards. And I went with this one because one reason I found an open box one for like a hundred bucks 
and it showed up and there was a MOSFET just rattling around in the box. I think Paul and Kyle did this to us on purpose. I wouldn't I, be surprised. I think they saw the, I think they were just walking around the warehouse and they saw, you know, like tech syndicate on the box and they were like, hold on a minute. Let me just get in there and pop off some MOSFETs. Whoa, I'm from California. Anyway, so we get our thing in and Wendell had to actually solder a MOSFET on. He ripped a MOSFET off of the MSI motherboard, soldered it onto this one. But that has made this motherboard, so far it's probably been the most stable motherboard that I have ever come into contact with. Um, your graphics card. The Asus 7970 DirectCU 2. Yep, and uh, you've got a little bit of an overclock on that one as well. That thing's triple slot, so it, it does take up a lot of room in there. I'm wondering if we'll be able to get a, a 290X. That's the one thing that we need to upgrade in this. Yep, that, that is my next upgrade, upgrade goal is the 290X. With a custom cooler. Um, but AMD has not been returning any of our uh, emails. AMD. <clears throat> <clears throat> but yeah, you've got it overclocked to 1100 megahertz and it does a good job. RAM. 32 gigs of Kingston Beast. Nobody needs 32 gigabytes. You should have purchased 8 gigabytes. Dumb render times, though. The thing about 32 gigabytes of RAM is if you're working with a ton of um, video files and that sort of thing, it, it's just going to be a lot better. So whenever it, it really helps out for Premiere. It doesn't really matter in games. Anything over 8 gigabytes these days in games is not really necessary, but 32 gigabytes is really handy for productivity. All right, the power supply. It's the Zygmatech Vector G 850 watt 80 plus gold. And what I really like about this is that when you turn your computer on, the fan ramps up to pretty much maximum speed and blows out any loose dust, and then it goes back down, and it's pretty quiet, actually. So when you first turn on, it blows out and gets rid of all the junk. So yep. that's another reason you don't have any dust in your cases, because this thing is blowing out all the dust. Um, the other thing that's nice about this one is that um, it will ramp up depending upon the load. So this system, it probably ramps up a bit, but it's still nice and quiet. It's got a decent fan in there. You guys can check out our video on, on that one. Uh, but it kind of went together with the case as well. And we had a few 80 plus power supplies laying around uh, at the time of the build, but this was the only gold one. It was a Sigma Tech, match the case, and it has some really cool features. So um, it's really been working out. Hard drives, uh, where's your OS hanging out? It is on an ADATA SX900 256-gig SSD. All right, what about your uh, storage drive? What are, you, what are you using for that? Just a normal Seagate 3-terabyte high drive. Just a Seagate Barracuda? Yep. All right, uh, we, we, which I should tell everyone that um, we don't have a lot of hard drives in our computers because we have a very large NAS. It's got several Seagate Barracudas in it. But in order to access the NAS quickly, we have one of these. I have an Intel Dual Gigabit NIC. So that's kind of handy to have. So that's Pistol's rig. Um, we'll be doing some more videos soon. Um, we're going to compare her computer to my computer, see which one's faster for which applications. It's not about like, oh, look how much money I spent, bro. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, like value per dollar. We're going to talk about, you know, speed for streaming, speed for rendering, and also just test out a few different games and, and see how, how they both, I guess, work. We'll also throw in a few 8350 benchmarks just for the hell of it. Click the link to go to where all the cool kids hang out. We really pay attention to the comments on there and just kind of not really look at the ones on YouTube. Yeah, we try to sort of avoid those. So if you actually want a voice, you can go sign up on there, and I'll be back in the next video in regards to my build. See you guys next time. That's a little bit different. I've got a, a, the Intel um, 4790, 4790, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30,